Hey, it's me, Jen again, and suppose you want to learn more about radio frequency ablation? Well, today you're going to hear it straight from a doctor. Stick around. Thanks so much for watching today. If you haven't already, please hit that like button and consider subscribing so you don't miss any of my new videos. Today, we're going to be hearing from Dr. Kathleen Hands, an endocrinologist from the great state of Texas. Let's get this interview started. Dr. Hands, what is your specific field of medicine and how long have you been practicing? By way of introduction, I am a thyroidologist, an endocrinologist with additional specialty training in thyroid disorders. Following endocrine fellowship, I attended a thyroid master's course in Santa Monica with Dr. Richard Gutler, who by the way is the reason thyroid RFA has finally gained approval in the USA. I have been seeing patients since 1979 but specializing in a thyroid-only practice since 2004. Dr. Gutler and I are the first trained endocrinologists in RFA. What specifically made you choose to go into this field of medicine? When I moved to Texas, to University of Texas Health Science Center, San Antonio, there was no setup for thyroid ultrasound. Coming from the Northeast, having experience, I developed the thyroid cancer and thyroid nodule clinic at university where I trained fellows to perform ultrasound and fine needle aspirations for thyroid nodules. I was the first in the country to get through the ECNU training, that's the ECNU and AIUM certified. These extended advanced and rigorous training courses ensure expertise in performing biopsies, therapeutic resolution of cysts, and now RFA training to obliterate large compressive nodules without surgery. Being able to preserve thyroid function is vitally important. This is an exciting new era for thyroid health worldwide. Have you personally struggled with thyroid nodules or thyroid disease? Can you relate to your patients in this way? I did develop Hashimoto's later in life. However, I've been blessed not to have any nodules to deal with. I do have a special place in my heart for those nodule sufferers who are having compressive symptoms or difficulty swallowing or just an underlying fear of cancer. Dr. Hans, you hold the distinction of being the first female endocrinologist in the state of Texas to offer radiofrequency ablation in your practice. What prompted you to add this modality to your practice? Dr. Gutler persuaded me to add RFA to my thyroid practice. As the first female endocrinologist in this country to perform RFA, it was important for us to make sure that we have well-trained individuals, have a passion for thyroid nodules, teach others to become involved in this process. It's important that skilled practitioners in ultrasound advance their training in performing RFA to preserve thyroid glands. Rudy Gray, was also instrumental in making the process easy with 110% support to set up and stand by our side to troubleshoot. He represents uh, RF Medical, which is the company that produces the machines for us for utilization. Without his support, I'm not sure I would have been able to put out the capital expense and take the time to learn this process. So he was instrumental in this as well. As a leader in thyroid disease at the ACE and ATA level, we make policy and it's important to bring better technologies to the table and walk the walk. There was trepidation at first, but it's the right thing to do. It's safe, it's far better for patients' outcomes. How long have you been performing thyroid RFA and PEI? I have been performing PEI for the past 20 years. RFA for soft tissue thyroid was only just approved at the end of 2018. Where did you receive your training in these procedures, and how long did it take you to become proficient in them? What all is involved in making this available to your patients? Those interested had to leave this country to get trained. Mr. Gray got a group of five of us from California, Arizona, Texas, and Pennsylvania, 
and we travel to Rio de Janeiro, South America, to enter course with Dr. Rangel with his four surgeon counterparts. The day was didactics and mechanical models in lab. Day two was a whole day of patients set up in the operating room with hands-on patients. I was able to ablate several nodules. Uh, my greatest fear was causing pain to patients. I did feel comfortable knowing that the patients had no discomfort whatsoever. I was very pleasantly surprised that it's a relatively painless procedure. Uh, after that, I felt very comfortable, and as soon as I returned from Rio, I started scheduling patients last fall. Proficiency in performing RFA depends on experience. If you're seeing someone who does FNA several times a week and ECNU trained, the learning curve is brief. It's the same setup and skill level. Helping patients understand whether they are candidates is a little more complicated. It's not for everyone. I've had several patients with dangerously large nodules with difficulty breathing from compression. So helping patients understand the limitations is also important. You know, just because we can do the procedure doesn't mean we should. As a relatively new procedure in the United States, we choose patients with those nodules that will yield the least complications and give great results. This is imperative to get insurance carriers to consider coverage. We want to prove that it is in fact safe. Approximately how many thyroids have you been able to save from surgery by offering these non-surgical procedures? Is this a common request of your patients? This is a common request of patients. The patients uh, presenting to my clinic want RFA. They absolutely do not want surgery. And as I said earlier, three of these needed surgeries. RFA would have taken three or four RFA procedures over several months and would not be financially feasible for them. Two of the three had surgery by excellent surgeons and are doing great. And currently I have 21 patients in the queue waiting for RFA. Physicians are coming to my office to observe, learn, and get hands-on experience. There is a skill set necessary and there is genuine desire in patients and clinicians alike to preserve thyroid gland function. What are the main reasons that patients give for wanting these types of procedures? Mainly, surprisingly to me, they don't want the scar. They want to preserve their thyroid, don't want to risk having to go to medications for life, and no downtime. They can go back to work after I finish, although I do give them a note for work to take the rest of the day off. What are the biggest pros and cons of RFA and PEI? The pros, of course, is you're fixing the problem while preserving normal thyroid. The only con would be cost. RFA is not universally covered by insurance. In time, this will improve. Appeal letters are available. Patient selection is vital knowing the cyst or nodule behavior, characteristics, and so on, dictate what's best. If care is taken, there should be less than 1% risk of complications. Can you please describe the RFA procedure in detail? RFA is very similar to fine needle aspiration. Patients should have at least one benign fine needle aspiration before seeking RFA. In RFA, there is high energy generating heat through a probe inserted into the nodule. It is inserted into sections of the nodule to ensure that most of the nodule is ablated properly. There are grounding pads placed on the thighs prior to starting the procedure. Subcutaneous lidocaine is injected in the mid portion of the neck where the probe will be introduced into the isthmus, which is the connecting thyroid bridge to the left and right thyroid lobes, and then into the nodule. Once placed within the desired treatment window, the heat is generated and machine impedance values elevates as tissue is destroyed. This process may generate a popping sound, which is normal. Following peak impedance, heat is turned off and the probe is moved to another region for treatment. This process is repeated until all quadrants of the nodule are ablated. Probe is then removed, a band-aid is applied, and the patient typically relaxes for the next half hour. At that point, we will do an exit ultrasound to be sure there are no hematomas or any complications, reviewing the patient, 
prior to discharge. They may then enjoy the rest of their day without gym time or exercise for the next 24 hours, otherwise normal activity is the norm. Approximately how long is the recovery period for RFA? We ask no strenuous activity on day of procedure, otherwise normal activity is the norm. There should be no swelling other than that at the affected nodule. Swelling and pain otherwise would be considered a minor complication. Being careful not to over ablate avoids 99% of complications. Just like in FNA, there is literally no downtime or recovery for an uncomplicated RFA procedure. What is the follow-up protocol for RFA? My patients text me the night of and the day after for my benefit, but follow up ultrasound at one month and three months, which is included in the price of RFA. For those in study protocol, an additional ultrasound is done at six and 12 months and any time patient may feel they need to be seen. Thyroid laboratory tests are done at three months or any time patient may feel something has changed to ensure normal gland activity. How long should patients expect to wait to see a decrease in their nodule size and in their symptoms? Are repeat sessions ever needed? To date, my patients with three to three and a half centimeter nodules have seen a 50% reduction in size of nodule at one month follow-up ultrasound. Symptoms of pressure from nodule are typically resolved at one week. This is size dependent. In nodules greater than four centimeters, more than one treatment may be necessary. Are patients usually pleased with their results? Well, I can tell you to date, they are all elated. I have not had any patients concerned regarding their results. They have all said that they were expecting something much worse, but it was much easier. Uh, they were all excited that there was no pain and they've been very pleased. What other modalities do you offer in your practice? Anything to preserve patients' dignity, comfort, and allay their fears. For instance, PEI for malignant nodes is a typical example. It can be curative without necessitating extensive neck dissections in the right patient. Proper evaluations preoperatively is the patient's best chance for cure. Very important for patients to advocate for their own care. It's a safe in-office procedure that can control persistent thyroid cancer, saving patients from the knife and a lot of anxiety. Don't be afraid to ask questions and get all the information you need to make an informed consent. If a proper assessment has been made and you are a candidate for RFA, you've already had a benign FNA. In skilled hands, RFA is not that much different from FNA. To date, most I've treated obtain 50% reduction in size of their benign nodule at one month and are very grateful to have relief of pressure in their throat. There you have it guys, all straight from the mouth of a doctor. Dr. Hans, thank you for doing this interview with me today. I'm so thankful that we have more and more doctors offering these non-surgical procedures and saving thyroids every day from being removed. Think about all of the thyroids that we can save as we bring more awareness to these non-surgical and quality of life saving procedures. If you would like to follow Dr. Hans on social media, you can find her on Facebook under the name RFA Thyroid Dr. Kathleen Hans, Texas, or you can Google the Thyroid Center of South Texas. It won't be long now until I go back up to Virginia to get the rest of this nodule treated as well as PEI on my gigantic kidney cyst. Don't miss that video coming up soon. Charlottesville, here I come. If you'd like to hear more interviews, take a look at this video here or more information about these procedures, this video here. As always, remember to educate yourself and always be your own health advocate.